welcome to the cook's domain today we're going to roast some chicken now i've had many a roast over the years and the really good ones have been few and far between and it's all about method more often than not it's been overcooked and dry with soft goo like skin so today i'm going to show you a foolproof method to get your perfect roast chicken every single time succulent juicy meat and crispy skin to make our perfect roast chicken we're going to do a couple of things first thing we want to do with clean hands we want to oil the bird fully with a little bit of olive oil so get your olive oil get some on there try and keep one hand clean so you can keep handling the bottle if you need more and just spread that everywhere now you only need a very thin coat, so don't, don't overly oil it. If you can spread what's on there now all over, that would be best. Okay, we want to do the underside as well. So let's turn the bird over. A little bit of olive oil. Just a thin coat everywhere. And you know you've got it because it'll glisten just a little bit. Okay, let's turn it back around. Next thing we want to do, and this is the part that creates the crispy skin, is salt. We want to salt the bird very, very well. I know you might think that this is a lot of salt. It really isn't. We're going to need at least five or six big pinches all over. Turn it around. Fault the underside as well. Now we want to get some of the salt on the inside too. Move the bird around so you're getting all its edges. The next thing we want to add is a few sprinklings of black pepper. The black pepper is seasoning. We don't want it to be a pepper chicken. So try and get as much as we can, but not too much on here. So I'd prefer to do it from a height so it spreads a little bit over because I just want a thin sprinkling of the black pepper on the bird. And that's perfect, just a little bit. Now I want to turn it over. And pepper the back as well. Just a little bit. Always remember, when you're handling chicken, every time you're about to do something else, like add pepper or salt, and you're going to handle something else, I wash my hands. So now you would have noticed that I haven't washed this chicken and there's a huge debate with regard to that here in the uk we buy our chickens in supermarkets they're pre-packed they would have gone through a process and they're clean there are places around the world though where you get your chicken almost directly from farms they're not so clean and need washing the theory for not washing in in the uk the us places like this is that Raw chicken carries bacteria, and if you wash your chicken, you're gonna get bacteria everywhere. As to whether you should wash or not wash, that's your own personal preference, so there's no reason to comment saying, oh, you're dirty, you didn't wash your chicken. It's not, there's nothing wrong with not washing the chicken, but if you wanna wash it, please go ahead and do so. That is completely up to you. I don't wash it, I don't think that's the right thing to do, but I'll leave that up to you. The next thing I wanna do is put something in the cavity to help give a little bit of flavor and also to keep the bird moist. Now there's lots of recipes with regard to this. Uh, people put in uh, lemons and beer, etc. I've done a lot of those recipes and they're really good, but they take you away from a classic roast chicken. The lemon leaves a lemony flavor. It's not a bad thing. And if I'm expecting that and I want that, that's great. But when I did it once thinking, oh, that's a great idea. I saw it, someone do it. I'll put lemon in there. It tasted, it changed the flavor of the chicken. 
and it wasn't what I was looking for. So my additions um, are very subtle, very, very subtle indeed, but they will enhance the chicken. That's the point. It will make it, your roast chicken be really rich and savory roast chicken flavor. If you then want to add lemon and strong herbs or beer or whatever, that will be up to you knowing that you've got this method down and you want to do it in that way. So all I'm going to add, I'll just move the chicken to one side for a moment, is half an onion. Now we want to keep the other half because we're going to need it later. Let me just get rid of some of the outer skin, which I don't want. And now I'm going to quarter this and get as much of it as I can in. This is not a really big chicken, so maybe we can't get half in there. But let's get what we can in there. No, we've got the one, we've got the first quarter in, and we've got the second quarter in. The other thing I'm going to add is thyme. Um, Thyme has a strong flavor if you put it into something with liquid, but it doesn't release its flavors so strongly when it's just roasting away. So it's very subtle. So just get a little piece and just put it in there. I've also got some dried sage leaves that I keep because I think sage goes really well with chicken. Again, it's gonna be very subtle. You might not even know that it's there, but the chicken will just have such a great, great flavor. And the last thing I do is a couple of pieces of uh, garlic. I always like to cut my garlic. I want to expose the innards of it and just get them in there. Just find the spaces and shove those pieces in there. Okay, let's clear the board and then we can truss. Okay, so the next step, you don't actually have to do it, um, but I'm going to truss the bird. Now, I'm not going to do a fancy, uh, a fancy truss here because it's not necessary really. I'm not going to be presenting this bird in any way. And that's what a lot of the truss is for. Because like all meats, when they cook, they sort of set. So if you bring the legs in and the, wing, and the wings in and you tie it all up and it cooks, when you cut all the string, the chicken will stay in that form and it will just look really good. But the other reason to do it is because it closes the cavity and that really helps if you actually have any stuffing in there or any aromatics like I do. So all I'm gonna do is just Truss it a little bit just to close the cavity as much as I can. You'll never get it fully, fully closed, but that's its purpose. But I'm not gonna do the classic French version because that is all about looks and I'm not so fussed about that. I want this to taste great. And to taste great, I have to take a very fundamental different step because the classic French way is to bring the legs back and up against the breast and tie it so that it looks in a particular way when it's done. Problem is, is that the thigh and the, uh, and, the, and the drumstick here sort of insulates the breast and the breast either won't cook in, in, inside this area or you will cook it all the way in here, which means the rest of the breast is gonna be dry and overcooked. So I'm not interested in that whatsoever. So what I'm gonna do is just bring the legs up together here, go underneath, bring them together, take my string and close them just here at the front like this. There we go. And we can cut off the excess. And what it does is it, it closes the cavity up a little bit more, but more importantly, it keeps the thigh and the drumstick, the whole leg area away from the breast here. So this will all cook, this will all cook, this will all cook together. As for the wings, I mean, if you buy it here in the UK in a supermarket, they do it for us. They've already pushed the wings back and pushed them underneath the bird. So we're, we're happy with that. It doesn't need trussing. All we've got to do now is get this in the oven. Now there's so many ideas out there on how to you know, roast chicken and what temperature for how long. No poultry should be cooked slow, whether you're cooking it in water or whether you're cooking it with a dry heat like roasting. It dries out. Now there's loads of ideas of how to stop that drying out process by lifting the skin and putting butter inside. The problem is butter burns. So you can't have a high heat, which means you have to take longer to cook it, which eventually just dries the bird out again and you won't get crispy skin. I've tried all these methods and they don't work. This is a method that's going to work. Chicken, turkey, poultry needs high heat for the shortest amount of time possible. That way we'll get a juicy, tender bird and we'll get crispy skin. 
I'm going to cook this at 230 degrees and I want an internal temperature of the breast at about 80 degrees. Now if anyone knows about cooking temperatures they're going to say no 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 chicken is cooked at 74. That, that's right but that recommendation comes from health organizations that tell you that it is safe to eat at 74. Does it taste good at 74? I've cooked it at 74. The meat is kind of rubbery almost with a bite to it that I don't think is very nice. Doesn't make me think of a good roast chicken. We need to go a little higher than that so that the meat starts to become really tender. We're not going to go too high so that it dries out but it's going to be just perfect at 80 degrees at the breast and we're talking about 85 in the thigh uh, in the thigh area um, so wherever you want a temperature probe it. If you don't have a temperature probe which please get one Amazon or something five six pounds they're not expensive uh, you can even get a cheap one like this it's not electric or anything you can just shove it in have it visible from the glass of your oven and it will give you a reading of what's going on or get uh, one of those electrical ones that have this uh, fold-out probe which you can then put in. That one doesn't go in the oven though. You just have to take the chicken out and probe it and test it and see what the temperature is. But I know that when we get to that temperature the chicken is going to be perfect. You'll see. Okay so now I want to prepare a vegetable trivet to sit the chicken on. I don't want it sitting actually on the base of my tray and also when it starts to release juices it will you know, fill up with liquid and the bottom part will boil and we don't want that. We want crispy skin or as best as we can crispy all the way around. Uh, the other reason is that the vegetables, they just impart a really nice flavor to what's going to be our gravy. Now the first part I'm gonna do and talk about is the garlic. Now I know there's people out there who just don't like garlic and that's fair enough. This is not a lot of garlic, nor the garlic I put inside the chicken or the garlic that's going to go in here. Garlic is a flavor enhancer. It's just going to make our gravy pop. Now, if you want to add a, you know, a whole bulb, cut down the middle like the celebrity chefs do, I mean, they must be garlic fanatics. Well, I am a garlic fanatic, but I, sometimes I don't want my gravy to be garlic gravy. You know, I want it to be a great savory, rich chicken flavored gravy. And just two, three pieces of garlic is going to really make it pop. And that's all we need. But if you think it isn't garlicky enough, you know, learn from this first time and then the next time you do it, just add more. Now, we want to chop up some carrots. We want to chop up some celery. And the last thing we want is that half of onion that we, that we kept back. Now, I always remove the papery outside for a couple of reasons. One, I don't know why, I just don't like using these. Secondly, it's quite shiny and uh, with a sharp knife you can slip and cut yourself. Not that I've done it. Well, came close. Again, just cut it straight down. We don't want it in particular, particularly small. Just go all the way down and spread that around as well. With our vegetable trivet ready, all we want to do is sit the chicken on top. Now I'm going to do something controversial and I recommend that you guys do it too. We're going to cook this upside down for 20 minutes and there's a number of reasons for that because I'm all about good food, good tasting food and I want this chicken to be the best it can be. Who likes dry overcooked breast? Nobody. So to make sure that we can get as juicy breast as we can, gravity forces everything downwards, we're going to cook it for 20 minutes only upside down. Problem with cooking it the whole cook upside down is that we're not going to get the crispy skin where we want it. I mean, we'll get crispy skin, but the breast will be less so, and that's not what we want. When the 20 minutes are up, I'll flip it over, finish the cook with it the right way up. Okay, so the first 20 minutes are up. Just going to get the chicken out of the oven. And all we're going to do is turn it around. Go in there, there we go. Now all I want to do now is add another sprinkling of salt over it. We want to add half a cup of water to the base. We want to protect the vegetables from burning. 
So that's 125 mils of water. Once we've done that, take our temperature probe and we want to get it as close to the middle, so we're close to the bone, and we want to get it as deep as we can into the breast without going too far. We don't want to break out into the cavity because then the temperature will be wrong. So we want somewhere in the middle of the meat of the breast. And we want to point it in such a direction that when it's in our oven, we can actually see it through the glass. So holding that down, let's stick that in there like that. And all we've got to do now is get it in the oven until it hits 80 degrees in the breast. Okay, so our chicken has reached temperature. I've taken it out of the oven and I've left it to rest for about half an hour. Now, to see whether it's done, the common advice is to poke the chicken with a skewer or something and see what the, how the juices run. Now, generally that works, but there's been lots of studies to show that sometimes chicken that's actually ready and can be eaten sometimes still has pink juices. And there's also been occasions in testing that uh, even when it's clear, it's actually not ready and uh, could still contain bacteria. So it's another reason why I recommend getting the thermometer uh, because that at that temperature, it's definitely safe to eat. So it's ready. So what I'm gonna do now is take it out of here Now with this stuff here, with the juices in here, we're gonna make a delicious chicken gravy. Let's carve into this chicken and see what it's saying. Oh, it's crispy. I can, just as I touch it and grab it, I can hear it making those crackly type noises. Uh, first thing to do, I guess, we'll take off the string. There we go. Okay, so let's take a slice. I'm gonna do a traditional cut for now so we can all see what that looks like. Uh, but for my own um, uh, table, I would actually cut the breast out as a whole, cut around the bone, take it out. And then once I've got it on the table, I would then make slices top to bottom this way. That way, every slice is a cross section from the outside with the skin all the way down to the bone, which is the juiciest part. Rather than just doing this and getting only slices from the top that are maybe, well, they're not gonna be dry, but they're not gonna be as juicy as the ones close to the bone. But anyway, for now, let's do this. Look at that. Look how juicy that is. Let's see, let's cut down here. Look at that. Just look how juicy that is. Look at that skin. Crispy as you like. And there we have it. Roast chicken with the trimmings perfectly cooked, succulent, tender, and crispy. Now there's always a balancing act when you're trying to get juicy, tender meat and crispy skin. I've seen some pics online where it's clear that the skin is super crispy, but the meat underneath, to get it that crispy, has to be dry. Or you can go for super moist and not get crispy skin. And I think this particular method gives you the best of both. It's clearly a crispy skin, and I know that the meat is absolutely juicy and tender. So all that's left is to uh, give it a try. Wow, not dry at all. Super tender, really juicy, and a rich savory chicken flavor. I just wanna get a little bit of gravy onto these potatoes as well, just to see the flavor of of that chicken gravy that we made using those juices. Wow. There's nothing like proper homemade gravy. And the last thing I just wanted to try, let's, let's break off the uh, drumstick here. Mmm, crispy skin, good flavor. God, and the chicken underneath, so tender, so juicy. Look at my fingers. 
it really is uh mm. well i'm gonna eat my dinner but as always thank you for watching